Welcome to part 3 of Deathclaw Hunting with a Switch. In the previous video, we technically fulfilled the challenge by killing a Deathclaw, but it was a young Deathclaw. Now, at that point, some big YouTuber like Matten or Oxhorn would pat themselves on the back and ask people to give them a bunch of money for doing something which in reality isn't all that impressive. But they think it is, and more importantly, their audience thinks it is. But it's not. That's not how I roll. While I could wrap it up there and say mission accomplished, like George Bush on the aircraft carrier, I would much rather do something that no one else has ever been able to do before. Not just kill any Deathclaw, but kill the mother of all Deathclaws. And do it at level 1 on very hard difficulty and hardcore mode. And I'm going to do it with the switchblade. And you're probably wondering how I'll manage to do that, and I'll show you. But the first step is to actually get to the quarry in the first place. And I'll show you a secret passage that no one else knows about, except maybe Melissa. The first step is to get past the Cazadors, which, as we all know, it will be a brick wall to level 1 characters. Who the hell is this guy? He must be one of Matten's subscribers, coming to warn us that we can't go this way Watch at level 1. This isn't fair! Oh god, no, no! Now, as I promised, there is a secret passage to get to Melissa, and the way you do that is you go here to this great con campsite, which, if I'm not mistaken, is where Benny and Chance and the other two cons made camp on their way to ambush the courier at Good Springs. Most people don't know it, but there's a secret way to climb up the hill right here. It is very important that you have your Stealth Boy activated, because there's a good number of death claws through here. But if you hug close to the cliff, and you take your time, and you're careful, then you can sneak through. And if not, well, that's what safe scumming is for, right? I'm not saying this is a YOLO challenge or anything. I died a fair number of times, but what matters is that I was successful in the end. Now, anyway, eventually you'll find this entrance to the quarry, and this will take you to Melissa. How exactly did Melissa get here anyway? I can't blame her for not leaving, because how the hell could she get past the death clause? She may be stranded until someone like me comes to save the day. And how will someone like me save the day? By killing the mother of all Deathclaws, of course. And I'm going to do it with the Switchblade. But I can't do it with just the Switchblade alone. I'm going to need to soften her up a bit first. At first I thought there was no possible way this could be done. But then I put my mighty brain to work and I remembered there's this fat man and a couple mini-nukes in the quarry. The fat man and one of the mini nukes is located in one of the ponds, and another mini nuke is located in the den. Will these mini nukes manage to kill the mother Deathclaw outright? At the time I filmed this, I didn't know. My explosive skill is very poor, and the fat man isn't at full condition, so I won't be able to use it at its full potential. But on the plus side, I actually do meet the enormous strength requirement, so that's one positive. I've also managed to grab a Patriot's cookbook and some Psycho at some point. I gathered supplies in Good Springs, NCRCF, and Jacobstown, so I grabbed this stuff somewhere along the way. And I'm not going to lie, I ended up getting killed a bunch of times, mostly while trying to retrieve the fat man from the pond. The Deathclaws love to loiter around in that area, and even with the Stealth Boy, their perception is so damn high that they were able to sniff me out a lot of the time, regardless. There is a perk you can get at around level 10 or so called Silent Running, which eliminates the sneaking penalty you get from moving. But obviously you can't have a level 10 perk when you're doing a level 1 challenge, so I had to make do without it. And it isn't easy, let me tell you. One thing you can do to maximize your sneaking ability is wait until nighttime. You're more likely to be detected in broad daylight, which makes sense, and the game does a pretty good job of modeling that. Other things which can wreck your sneaking ability is if you bump into objects. 
I think moving through the water in this pond damages your sneaking ability, just as any movement at all does, so getting that mini nuke out of the water isn't easy. The fat man is on the shore, so it's easy to grab that, but you really need to have both in order to do this challenge. Because one mini nuke just isn't enough to weaken the mother to the point where she can be easily finished off with a switchblade. Like I said, this would be a lot easier if I were doing this at night, and it actually was night when I snuck past the Cazadors on the road north of Good Springs. But between then and now, hours of in-game time have passed, and now the sun is up. So that's an issue. And wouldn't you know it, the stealth boy finally died. But fortunately, I was in a safe place when it happened, and I quickly activated the second stealth boy. It turns out you really do need both stealth boys in order to do this. And you also need Logan's loophole and Lily's stealth girl perk, which together increase the stealth boy duration to 400%. To do everything that I did here, it really took all of those things. And unless you scaled back somehow, I don't think you could manage it if you sacrificed any one thing. Now, it is just a simple matter of making our way over to the den where there is some skeletons, an LMG, and 556 ammo, some Deathclaw eggs, which of course we will be grabbing because there is someone in Sloan who would love to get their hands on one, and of course the second mini nuke, which we need because this is right down to the wire. And of course I'm going to save so I don't have to go through all this again. Now, it is time to equip the fat man and buff myself up. I have a weapon repair kit, which I got from Victor's shack in Good Springs, and I'm going to use that to fix the fat man up a bit. Someone asked me why didn't I use that on my switchblade. Well, I had Calamity in Jacobstown repair the switchblade, so I didn't need to waste the repair kit. It's better to use it on this instead. Alright, let's see what happens. Very good. Now, let's quickly switch to the Switchblade, pop some turbo, and read the Tales of Chivalry magazine. The trick is to make sure to get and stay behind the Deathclaw so she can't swipe us. Deathclaws can only tack in front, so if you stay behind them, you're good. Excellent. I don't know if you see that message that popped up, but there's a GRA challenge for killing Deathclaws with low tier weapons, and that includes Switchblades. So killing Deathclaws with Switchblades is something the game intends for players to be doing, albeit maybe not at level 1 like I just did. Speaking of which, the XP I gained from killing the Deathclaw Mother has caused me to level up, but I need to get out of combat. I make sure to take advantage of the turbo, which is still in effect, to make a hasty egress and cover my escape using some frag mines, which I acquired from the powder gangers. The frag mines cripple the pursuing Deathclaw, and finally, I am in the clear. Now, with the Stealth Boy still in effect, I decide to sneak my way towards Sloan. Things are a bit tricky with this Deathclaw, but I manage to skirt my way around without being detected and eventually I finally get out of caution so that I can level up. 
I decide to dump all my points into Sneak because I still need to sneak my way back to Sloan, and there's no guarantee I'll make it. I'm out of Turbo, and there's no more Stealth Boys. So getting detected right now would be an almost certain death. But thankfully, the rest of the journey passes without incident, and I make my way to Sloan. Chomps Lewis is impressed by the fact that I managed to approach from the north. He is even more impressed when I tell him that I killed the mother of all Deathclaws. If only there was some way to tell him I did this at level 1, he'd probably faint due to impressiveness overload. But as long as the alpha male is still alive, that pack isn't going anywhere, even with the Deathclaw mother out of the picture. They moved into the quarry after the powder gangers came through and made off with most of our dynamite. We shut the quarry down while we waited for the NCR to get us some more blasting sticks, but now the death claws have shown up. The NCR is a no-show, and my men and I have got nothing to do but sit on our asses all day. It's damn frustrating. Uh, we'd see them occasionally, but they didn't seem too keen on getting too close to the quarry. Not sure if it was the noise or all the workers. I can't believe that an entire pack moved into the quarry. I thought that kind of bad luck only happened in New Vegas. There are a bunch of escape cons from down south. The NCR was using them to maintain the railways as part of their sentence. I don't know who screwed up. But the powder gangers are loose. It was one group that attacked us and took our entire supply of dynamite. Okay. This is Sloan, a camp for us quarry workers. The actual quarry, Quarry Junction, is up the road north of here. The whole thing is an NCR operation. We make cement for the NCR using the limestone we dig out with dynamite and drag lines. Dirty work but the pay is good. Wish we got paid in caps, though. Not a lot of merchants like taking NCR paper money. It all gets shipped by rail over towards Boulder City and Hoover Dam. The NCR is probably building fortifications with it all. It's a big machine which moves rocks around, piles at a time. It's pre-war tech, so you need to thump it once in a while to keep it running. Nope. The NCR has been trying to switch over to using paper money, just like in the pre-war days. Trouble is that the exchange rates ain't exactly fair. For example, a hundred bucks in NCR money is valued at roughly half that in caps around here. Seems like a rotten deal for us, but work is work. Sure. If you insist on going north, don't be expecting a rescue when you get into trouble. I look around the town for a bit, investigate the suitcase Melissa wanted me to look into, but find it to be empty. I also see some injured mole rat, but I don't have the medical skill to do anything for it, except euthanize it, perhaps. Finally, I enter the mess hall, and after observing some strange meat pies in the back, I talk to Jass Wilkins and give her one of the three Deathclaw eggs I retrieved from the den. And in exchange, she gives me a Deathclaw omelet, as well as the secret recipe. Let me ask you a question. What's the tastiest thing you've ever eaten? Ah, yeah, can you believe some people still eat that stuff? Anyway, I've got this recipe for a Deathclaw omelet that I've been itching to try out. 
Trouble is, I need a Deathclaw egg. Kinda obvious, I suppose. I can't believe you actually got one. Give me a bit to get the recipe set up, then talk to me again. This is incredibly good. Here's your omelet, and the recipe if you ever want to make your own. It takes a bit of skill to get it tasting right. Yeah? My great-aunt Rose ran a bed and breakfast back in California, in a town called Modoc. She's the one who created the recipe in the first place. I don't know how she managed to get a hold of a female deathclaw, but she kept it in a shed. Aunt Rose had a steady supply of eggs for her omelets. At least, she did until some stranger came along and killed the deathclaw. Shot it right in the eye. All right. Do you need anything to eat or drink? Sure. What did you want to know? Oh, I'm not. I'm making my way to New Vegas. They say anything goes there. And best of all, the NCR can't mess it up for you. I'll get there eventually. <clears throat> I've heard that you can't even get into the Strip unless you're rich. Born and raised. Things back in California are better than they've ever been, according to my grandpa. The raiders are mostly gone now, and it's easy enough to get a job at one of the mills or farms. But now there's taxes and laws and other things. The NCR keeps things safe and orderly, but it's all very boring. So, I came out east, towards the frontier. All right. Do you need anything to eat or drink? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go Deathclaw hunting with a switch at level 1. Very hard. Hardcore. Now, I could go back and kill the alpha male, but I'm now level 2, so it just wouldn't be a level 1 challenge anymore. And what's the fun in that? It's too damn hot. Surprised anybody would want to tangle with you. Heck, you could go deathclaw hunting with a switch. <laughs>